Today I'm going to bring you through the procedure that I use to fix a Dell E5450 laptop. This laptop came to me with uh, no power on, no LEDs, no screen, no nothing. Uh, I checked beforehand and the power adapter was good, there was 19 volts on it, but nothing happening at all on the laptop. So given that there was literally nothing happening on the laptop, I sort of deduced that it was probably an issue with the 19 volts coming in so I decided to focus on that section and this is the section of the motherboard where the voltage enters the circuit so as you can see I'm just going to introduce my red probe here so the voltage comes in on these two red wires here it goes through this inductor through this first MOSFET through this second MOSFET, through this current sense resistor, through this large inductor, and then onto the rest of the circuit. So I'm going to just take you through the procedure that I use to troubleshoot this. First of all, we turned our multimeter on and switch it to volts DC and put it in the 20 volts range. Next, I get my black probe and I place it to ground and I brought my red probe through the circuit then for taking measurements. So the first thing we needed to know was that the jack and the adapter were in pretty poor condition so I wanted to be sure that there was 19 volts actually making it to the motherboard. So I placed my red probe to this pin here and check for volts and I found out that there was 19 volts at this point. I was a bit surprised by this because like I said the adapter and the power jack were not in good condition but the fact we've 19 volts there mean that both the jack and the adapter are fine. So that 19 volts then hits the pad here and you can see that it goes to an inductor, sorry an inductor here and a capacitor here. So if we look at our schematic we can see that here is our jack coming in and this is the first inductor that it hits. So this is our inductor PL4. So we want to know if that 19 volts is getting through that. So once again, I move to this side. I place my probe on this side of the inductor, check for volts again. And I found that there was 19 volts here also. So there's no issue with our inductor. So we know that that carries the voltage then to this section here, which hits another capacitor and our first input MOSFET. So usually on these laptops, there's two input MOSFETs that uh, control the 19 volts entering the circuit. If there's an issue with too much current coming in or too much voltage or an issue with the circuit itself, these will switch off and they'll block the 19 volts from coming in. So the next step I want to try is on volts DC again, I want to see if that 19 volts is making it from this section here, which we know it is on this section, through this first MOSFET and onto this section here. So I'm going to place my probe on this capacitor and on my multimeter I check for volts and I saw that there was zero volts at this point. So this was very quickly diagnosed as being an issue with this MOSFET here not passing the 19 volts from this side to this side here thus stopping it from getting into the rest of the circuit. So the question then was why is it not passing the voltage through here? So this could be for a number of reasons but the first thing I decided to do at this point was to check for shorts and just see if there was a short anywhere on the motherboard that may have been causing this MOSFET to stay switched off and thus stopping it from switching on. To check for continuity we first of all need to remove our power adapter so I'm just going to disconnect that here so no power connected to the circuit we change our multimeter from voltage mode to continuity mode which usually has a symbol that looks something like this on most multimeters so we switch to continuity mode and then we place our black probe on ground once again and now we're going to check for continuity uh, using my red probe so when i got my red probe and i put it to this section here which on our schematic is the point between the two MOSFETs here. I checked for continuity and I discovered that I was getting OL, which is over limit. So there was no short on this section at all. So next, I wanted to check after 
this MOSFET here to see if there was a short on the main 19 volts power rail. I placed my red probe on the power resistor here, the current sense resistor. I checked for continuity and it gave me a zero indicating that there was a short. Most multimeters beep when this happened as well. But this indicated to me that there's a short on somewhere after this second MOSFET. And this was obviously the reason that the 19 volts was shut down on the way into the circuit. So looking at this on our schematic, we can see that this section is good. We have 19 volts to here. There's no short on this section here, although there is no 19 volts. However, after the second MOSFET, there is a short when I place my red probe here and I check for continuity. So one thing I noticed looking at the schematic was that there was only a finite amount of components between uh, the second MOSFET and this dual MOSFET here. So we only had one power resistor, one inductor, and six capacitors. So what I decided to do was to see if there was a short on the other side of this MOSFET. So once again, uh, in continuity mode, I got my red probe and placed it here which is the other side of this MOSFET here and when I did that there was no short on this side either. So this helped me to deduce that the short was on one of these components here. It was either somehow on the current sense resistor, the inductor or the capacitors. Since I had narrowed it down to a finite number of components, which were essentially this power resistor, this inductor, and these capacitors, it forced me to look a bit more at those components. And when I looked closer, and I noticed a bit of a cheat, because it says me have the voltage inject and all sorts of other stuff, I was actually able to see that this capacitor here was not in good shape. So I took my hot air gun and removed this which I'm going to demonstrate here. I removed that capacitor and I checked again for continuity. So once again, my black probe to ground and my red probe on the power resistor, current sense resistor. I checked for continuity at this point and then I got a well. So the short was gone. So the short was in that capacitor alone and that's what was causing the issue. So with the short now removed, I decided to plug back in my charger and check once again to see if we have 19 volts past that first MOSFET. So once again with my multimeter in volts DC and placing my black probe to ground and my red probe to the capacitor after the first MOSFET, which is this point here, I checked for voltage once again. However, I was surprised to see that there was still zero volts at this point. So I needed to quickly get this sorted. So I thought there must have been an issue with this MOSFET. So I said the quickest thing to do was just simply to bypass it. So I took out my soldering iron and I soldered a jump wire from this inductor here to the second MOSFET, basically bypassing this here. And this is the jump wire I put in. So we're basically taking the 19 volts from this section, bringing it over the MOSFET that we know is not working and straight to the second MOSFET. And when I did that, the laptop started working again.